Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great holiday season. If you're looking for a last minute holiday gift or trying to do something nice for yourself, why not take your data set and put it into the Weaviate vector search engine and see what it can do for you. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to upload your custom data sets into Weaviate. Uh, as an example, I've uploaded the Keras code examples into Weaviate as I'm developing this Keras BERT project, a language model trained on these uh, Keras code examples, Keras API reference, and Keras developer guides. Basically the idea of using natural language processing on this kind of uh, data repository. So as a quick background, as we go through the examples of uh, searching through the Keras code examples with Weaviate's vector search engine, uh, what this is is Keras code examples has these community contributed examples implementing cutting edge deep learning research. There are some really interesting and exciting examples all across this documentation in computer vision, natural language processing, structured data, time series, audio data, generative deep learning. And this is really cool for uh, Weaviate as well because we can say uh, symbolically annotate the category computer vision natural language processing. If we want to have a symbolic filter as we do neural search through some category, uh, we can do things like date published, last updated, uh, the authors we can search through, and all sorts of cool things. So uh, so these are, this is the data set. And so in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to do something like uh, just grabbing all this data and then just dropping it into the uh, data importing interface in Weaviate such that you can query it in this console. So for now, this is just the local host. Uh, in the future, I'll be having a cloud runtime where anyone can access this demo. But for now, I'm just kind of showing you how, to, how this works through this video. But so what you can do is uh, doing things like uh, neural text search. You can type in concepts like transformer neural networks and it'll search through the Keras code examples to find uh, implementations that use the transformers, like implementing vision transformer, compact convolution transformers, and what have you. And you can do things like, say, uh, data augmentation. And again, you can search through the Keras code examples. So, so this is the idea for now, and we're gonna go through some more queries as well, but more importantly, I think, is understanding uh, how to download the uh, localhost Docker image, how to set up the schema, and then how to format your data into JSON objects, and then the syntax for uh, using either the Weaviate Python client to add data or using the uh, Weaviate CLI, where you just do uh, in the shell command Weaviate data import, the name of your JSON file, and, and that's one, one way to do it if you're adding it, say, one at a time compared to looping through the directory with the Python file. But anyway, so that's kind of the overview of this video and then ending with some ideas for Keras BERT and how I plan to be building on this. So to get started, first you're going to have your Docker Compose file populated by uh, going through the user interface on the Semi Technologies Weaviate documentation. So you go here to Installation, and then you come down to Customize Your Weaviate Setup. Uh, you answer some questions like what version of Weaviate you want to use, uh, what kind of data generally. Uh, you can use custom vectors and just upload the vectors, but if you just do the uh, text image, text and image, or clip, It'll, um, Weaviate will populate the transformers for you automatically, say uh, like grabbing a sentence BERT or uh, a ResNet 50 or whatever it is and make it a little easier if it's your first time doing it compared to if you're more experienced and you want to upload custom data objects and custom models to vectorize these custom data objects, like whether it's say uh, genetic sequences and you need to have some kind of custom model and, and that kind of thing. So for now we're just looking at text and images because it's like these are like the two most commonly studied data types in uh, deep learning. So now you pick uh, how you want to vectorize the uh, data. So you can do transformers, or you can do uh, glove, fast text, uh, contextual area, kind of word, word embeddings idea, average out the word embeddings, or you can use the uh, transformers. Uh, then you can pick, so this is a really cool thing. This is one of my favorite things is how uh, easily it integrates with uh, Hugging Face and how you can pick whichever kind of Hugging Face model you want to use to vectorize the text. So in this case, we're just going to pick the, um, I think this is multi for multilingual. It could be maybe there are multiple annotated question answering or something like that. But what we have is we have the uh, we have a sentence transformer, one of these sentence birth, these Siamese architectures that are encoding text data into 384 dimensional vectors. So then um, then you decide to add additional modules. This is where you have the retrieval step and then you might have some kind of supervised learning processing step on top of the retrieval step. But for now, we're not going to use that in this example. Similarly, you could do named entity recognition, all sorts of supervised learning tasks, like maybe you want to add a re-ranking layer here, I think. I'm not too sure about exactly how that works, so disregard that. Um, text spell check, uh, GPU support for the vectorization, I think. Uh, something else about data, runtime, and then, okay, so, so I guess this matters on, uh, we're just gonna be doing a local host example for this. So from there, you'll get this uh, Docker Compose file. So you're gonna download this, and you're gonna take this, and then you're gonna uh, change the directory into your local file where you have all your data. Uh, download the Docker Compose file, and then Docker Compose up, and then Docker will be running, and this is where we're gonna 
Uh, this is where our container, our Weave 8 instance is running and where we're gonna upload our data into. So the next thing to do is gonna be to create a schema for your data. So the general format for having the uh, schema annotation is you start off with this open bracket, classes, open square bracket, and then you're gonna define the first class and you might have multiple classes. So uh, in Weave 8, you have this class cross-reference thing where each object is a class with properties. So similar to say object-oriented programming where you have a class and it has its attributes, it's a similar kind of idea of a class with its properties. So in this case of the Keras code examples, we have the article and its properties, and then kind of for the sake of illustration, I didn't really populate this, but in the future when it's more fleshed out, you also have the class with the author. And so the way that they cross-reference each other is author has articles, and that has articles links back to articles, and article similarly has author, and the author links to the other class in the schema, which is the author. So we have article, we have a description about the article, uh, and then we start doing some things about uh, telling Weaviate how to build up this HNSW vector index. So what, H what uh, Weaviate is doing that's different from say just calculating the embeddings of your data set and then just doing a dot product for similarity with all these vectors is it builds up this data structure known as HNSW. It's gonna dramatically speed up this kind of nearest neighbor search once you have a very large amount of data uh, in this kind of, in, in your uh, Weaviate database and your Weaviate instance. So we're giving it some uh, information about how to build up the HNSW index. We tell it things like uh, which properties to vectorize. So for example, say we don't want to vectorize the uh, title of the Keras code example. We only want to vectorize the content or the description. We would uh, set skip equals true to those other things. Uh, vectorize property name is referring to whether to vectorize the uh, name of the attribute itself so compared to the uh, value of it. And there are all sorts of other things you can look at for setting this up. So from the high level overview, you define the class, you give a description of the class, you set some things with the HNSW and whether or not to vectorize the name of the class itself. And then you give it the properties of the class. Uh, you tell it what data type it is, whether it's a string for text, a date for say, uh, when the Keras code example was published or last updated and so on. So I hope this is pretty clear for how to kind of configure a schema. You label it, say it's an image, text, so once you have this schema, you're gonna grab it and put it into the Weaviate Python client to create your Weaviate instance. So you, uh, you grab this JSON object, you have client equals weaviate.client, connect to say localhost in this example, and then uh, client.schema.create data schema with this being the data schema. So then what you're gonna do is uh, format your data into this schema in these JSON objects. So in my case, I had to do a little bit of, um, I had these raw text files from uh, training Keras Bird, the language model, and I needed to put them into JSON. So I had to like put it into a Python dictionary and then read the dictionary to get it from the text file to JSON. So hopefully this isn't something you have to deal with, but if you are curious, that might be something that's important. But in, anyways, in the end, so what you have is you have these, um, like I had to write that little script to just process um, particularly at the end with um, escaping quotations with these quote, with these code examples and things like that. Anyways, or that's not an example of that, but just here's an example of like, you have to escape things like that if you're working with code data, particularly things like that. But so anyway, so w once you format these, uh, your data set, whatever you're working with the, into these objects, and this is how you do it with text data in a future video, I'll show you how to do this with images as I myself learned how to do that. So, okay, so now you have some directory where you have, uh, so this is final upload, meaning a final upload to Weaviate. So now um, you're gonna import Weaviate, uh, connect to the client, loop through each of the directories in final upload, loop through each of the individual, in the, the subdirectories. Then you're gonna open the file, you're gonna uh, read the data with the JSON, and then you're gonna have the client.dataobject.create, Weaviate data article, and this will loop through the files and populate the Weaviate instance. So in addition to using the Python script to upload data to Weaviate, you can also use the command line interface. And for me, this was, uh, I prefer to do this to get like my first thing in there just so I understood what was going on and, um, and making sure that the schema that I have is matching the proper thing and it's properly getting in there. So uh, what you do is just, you navigate to where the JSON file is located and then just Weaviate data import the name of the file. So hopefully that was a decent uh, introduction to how you can set this up and not too uh, complicated to just get the basic idea of, you know, formatting your data into JSON objects, defining the schema, and then the Weaviate client to loop through your data and upload it into Weaviate. I don't think any of that is too complicated, so I, you know, I hope you don't either. 
So um, so then here's something that I thought was useful is just do, doing the meta, just counting, making sure you really, um, you know, that the cardinality of the data that's in the Weaviate instance matches what you had originally. And now let's get into some of the GraphQL queries. So now all the Keras code examples are into Weaviate or, you know, whatever you're working with would be into Weaviate at this point. So now let's get into some of the queries that you can do by using that uh, pre-trained sentence transformer model and use it for uh, nearest neighbor search with neural search as well as combining symbolic filters. So here's an example of a neuro symbolic query that I hope you think is interesting. So you start off with the neural query of matching the text embeddings of data augmentation with the uh, vectorizations of the Keras code examples. Then you add the symbolic regular expression matching to make sure it contains a string mix. So say mix up and cut mix are um, things that we want to be matched. So uh, even though this compact convolution transformer thing comes up, it must have mix in, because we're searching through the content where we have the, um, the massive set of all these things. So if we search through it, we see that, you know, mix up is mentioned in this <laughs> Keras code example in the content. So I mean, cleaning up the Keras code example data and figuring out all that, I do think there will be a little more work to that. But in general, you can see how you get a pretty, uh, pretty solid result of, uh, you know, mix up, cut mix, compact, we look for it. All these things do probably reference mix, you see MLP mixer. <laughs> and you see that, um, you see this kind of idea of, neuro symbolic search and I think it's going to be one of the most interesting kind of parts of these vector search engines is figuring out how to combine neural search and symbolic search so hopefully this is a decent example of kind of giving a taste of what that looks like another idea that I think could be interesting for working with code data particularly things like if you're trying to reproduce codex or maybe using hugging faces new code parrot model and following their tutorial on how to train it could be to use wev8 for data deduplication we've seen that uh, getting rid of like the same data over and over again for a language model helps the generalization of the language model. So here's an example of using the uh, force thing to compress your data set based on similarity using Weave 8. So this could be another really cool feature for uh, training language models and cleaning data sets for uh, just like another functionality of Weave 8 in addition to kind of the nearest neighbor search and all these other kind of things. So that wraps up the overview of Keras code examples into Weave8 and what to do if you want to uh, set that up. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions or if you want the JSON files or anything like that for your local host, or maybe I'll just uh, zip it up and put it in the description of this video. But anyway, so here's kind of like what's next on the roadmap is uh, I'm really looking now into Clip and trying to understand how to upload images into Weave8 and how uh, Clip works. I do have a personal project that I think would be cool, which would be uh, captioning deep learning figures and using Clip to do that uh, text image search with deep learning figure retrieval and kind of scraping that data from archive. I think that could be a lot of fun. Uh, I think visual supervision of language models could be really interesting. And again, coming back to this idea of uh, language modeling Keras code and deep learning research papers, having that visual supervision of the figures. I, I don't know how well that would work, but I think it could be an interesting project. It just sounds like fun. So also in general, with Keras BERT and this kind of idea of the language model in Keras, I really need to get more data. So the Keras API reference, code examples, developer guides, not enough data. So looking for more data, uh, Medium and Stack Overflow look promising. Uh, GitHub is, I think it's like mostly code and I want to kind of keep it mostly natural language and that kind of ratio, but not even sure if that's right, but that's just like what I'm thinking right now. Uh, so then I'm kind of very curious about fine tuning. We've seen how the off the shelf models in Weave do work pretty well, but I'm just curious and I want to see what it looks like when you uh, fine tune the vectorizer as well as add the question answering module after the retrieval step. So here are some things that I'm kind of thinking about with Weave8 and kind of like where, say, Henry AI Labs is headed with these videos. So if you're curious about what a language model trained on this uh, Keras code examples, Keras API reference, and Keras developer guides data set looks like, uh, here is a Hugging face, uh, Spaces built by Merv uh, that shows you how to play around with Keras BERT and have it fill in mass tokens. So uh, you give it some kind of input and then you just put the mass token and it will you know, fill in the mass. That's like what language modeling does. So <laughs> here's an example of Keras BERT, and this will be linked in the description of the video. As a side note, thank you so much to Omar for including uh, Keras BERT in this list of quick demos on Hugging Face Spaces. This is a super cool list, so many interesting demonstrations of deep learning models and what they can do, and really grateful to have uh, Keras BERT be on this list. Mm -hmm.